this president's foreign policy is the most feckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians, and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. But the reality is, and I'm worried because, frankly, within the... That was Barack Obama. He just tripped off a chair. He's getting ready to speak, and somebody aimed a gun at him, and he, he dove for the floor. This president's foreign policy is the most feckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians, and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. But the reality is, and I'm worried because, frankly, within the... That was Barack Obama. He just tripped off a chair. He's getting ready to speak, and somebody aimed a gun at him, and he, he dove for the floor. And he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. Do you stand by your comments? What Absolutely, you I do. Absolutely, I do. Three times I've been to Auschwitz. When I talked about the oven door, I have stood at that oven door. I know exactly what it looks like. The IRS is the closest thing the U.S. has to a Gestapo. When I talked about the oven door, I have stood at that oven door. I know exactly what it looks like. The IRS is the closest thing the U.S. has to a Gestapo. And, and something came up about guns, and, and they were saying about how nobody should ever own an AR-15. Well, there's just no reason to own an assault weapon. And I said, every weapon is an assault weapon. And I said, every weapon is an assault weapon. We shouldn't have muskets to serve in our country. We should have what the military has. Well, we should have whatever we choose to have, because right. it's a citizen's right. The government shouldn't tell me what the limitations of my self-protection are. If somebody's going to break in my house, I want at least to be as well armed as they are, if not better armed than they are. Right. My plan is always to have a, a better arsenal to defend myself than they are going to have to try to attack me. President Obama used the South Carolina church shooting to score some political points. He wants to go after the guns. Uh, pretty despicable behavior, uh, what he said and what he did. I want to get your reaction to that. Well, it was disappointing to hear the president uh, within virtually minutes of, uh, I guess, the news breaking, or certainly hours of it breaking, for him to come to the podium and immediately begin to say, all right, this is a great opportunity for me to grandstand and uh, jump up on the stump and let's talk about gun control. All of the proposals that this president and others have put forward on gun control would not have stopped this shooting any more than it would have stopped Sandy Hook. Uh, the one thing that would have at least ameliorated the horrible situation in Charleston would have been that if somebody in that prayer meeting had a concealed carry or there had been a, either an off-duty policeman or an on-duty policeman, somebody with the legal authority to carry a firearm and could have stopped the shooter, Maybe not everyone would have been saved, but they probably would have gotten to the shooter before the shooter killed nine people and wounded several others. We're trying to make sense of the horrific shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School, but we're not going to make sense. Not from that which is totally disconnected from the cognitive capacity of any rational human being. Well, the predictable left lit up the airwaves and blogosphere with a vile and vicious reaction and jumped to the conclusion that I said that if we had prayer in school, the shooting wouldn't have happened. Well, I said nothing of the sort. It's far more than just taking prayer or Bible reading out of the schools. It's the fact that people sue a city so we aren't confronted with a manger scene or a Christmas carol, that lawsuits are filed to remove a cross that's a memorial to fallen soldiers. We carefully and intentionally stop saying things are sinful, and we call them disorders. Sometimes we even say they're normal. And to get to where that we have to abandon bedrock moral truths, then we are asked, well, where was God? And I respond that as I see it, we've escorted him right out of our culture, and we've marched him off the public square. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful celebration. And we're so very glad that all of you could join us here tonight as we get underway to hear the president. Oh, my gosh. Excuse me. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm right in the middle of an event. It's who? It's God? <laughs> On the phone for me? How, how did he get my number? Oh, God has everybody's number. Okay. 
Yes, I'll hold. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, sir, I'm right in the middle of a, the president's coming. Yes, sir. He sure is. Oh, yes, sir, he's here too. He is. Uh, <laughs> and you, uh, you, uh, you say you, you want, you, you need an autograph. Oh, for, for Samson, I, I understand. Yes, Lord. And, and you, know, you know, God, this is a pretty big event. We've got a lot of people, and, and I've only got a very short time here. Oh, you've got all the time in the world. I understand. <laughs> yes, Lord. And you want me to deliver a message? And that would be, yes, sir. Well, we want to, yes, sir, we want to do what's right. And our president does. And we're behind him. Yes, sir, we sure are. And we, yes, sir, we know you don't take sides in the election, but, <laughs> but if you did, we, we kind of think you'd hang in there with us, Lord. We really do. So, and, yes, sir, we'll pass those good words on. I see you talk to the president, and he talks to you anyway. So that's, and we know that. And we know that, yes, sir. Take care of the, the family and marriage and the people of America and all the people and the children. And yes, sir, I can tell you every one of us are committed to doing that and a whole army of people out here, and we pledge we'll do our very best to do that, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for blessing me, and we'll bless you too. Thank you, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this evening's chairman, Mitt Romney. I wish someone had told me when I was in high school that I could have felt like a woman when it came time to take showers and PE. I'm pretty sure I would have found my feminine side and said, Coach, I think I'd rather shower with the girls today. 